1-866-628-2276.com or 1-866-628-2277. Hello, beloved. This is Mother Miriam. Thank you for listening to the Station of the Cross, proclaiming the fullness of truth with clarity and charity. Heard around the world on your Android and Apple mobile devices. Welcome to Mother Miriam Live on the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network with live video streaming brought to you by LifeSite News and the Station of the Cross. Call Mother with your questions at 1-877-511-5483 or email her at mother at thestationofthecross.com. You can view the live stream on Facebook at Mother Miriam Live. Now, here's Mother Miriam. Good morning, beloved family. How are you? I pray that you're well. I'm so glad to be with you. You know, there might be a day that we won't be able to do this, uh, and even in America, so I'm I'm thrilled. And um, uh, we are right in the middle of uh, Cardinal uh, Raymond Burke's talk given in May of this year at the Rome Life Forum, actually Voice of the Family Conference streamed online, which is a combination of the Rome Life Forum and LifeSite News. Um, uh, And it's a tremendous talk, and I'm reading it because so many of your calls and emails um, uh, have... um, are focused on receiving communion, the suspension of mass, communion on the tongue, all of that. And it's it's been so, so very difficult. Um, uh, our um, producer, Mike, has the, uh, the uh, URL to the talk um, that you can look it up on the Internet yourself, voiceofthefamily.com slash Fatima Heaven's Answer to a World in Crisis. And um, it's a good one to look up, to print out, to read to your family. Um, but we began, we left off yesterday at the crucial paragraph that people have been asking me to reference um, when I've been saying that no bishop, no priest, uh, no one has the power to dispense us from the Holy Mass. I'm going to pick up again at that paragraph today. Um, Cardinal Burke says the Sunday Mass obligation, for instance, participates in natural and divine law, the third commandment of the Decalogue, which we are obliged to observe unless for reasons beyond our control we are not able to do so. During the present crisis, it has been said that bishops dispense the faithful from the Sunday Mass obligation. But no human has the power to dispense from divine law. If it has been impossible during the crisis for faithful to assist at Holy Mass, then the obligation did not bind them, but the obligation remained. See? So there's quite a difference. I'm I'm amazed. Even yesterday I looked up some diocese and saw that they have a message that the dispensation remains. They have no right and no power to do that. I'm so amazed that bishops do not know uh, church law and canon law and the difference between um, human law and divine law. I, I It uh, absolutely astounds me. I don't um, attribute any, um, uh, how do I say, r- negative... Uh, intent to them but that's it's I want to say it's ignorance and again ignorance doesn't mean stupidity it means lack of knowledge and I'm amazed that a bishop would any bishop and it seems that all I don't know if any bishop in the country has not given such a dispensation which doesn't exist because he has no power to do it so it's it's just amazing. It's always been this is a divine law anymore we cannot change any of the commandments you cannot say uh, because of the pandemic, uh, all of a sudden you the the uh, um, uh, you've been given a dispensation for stealing. I mean, if you run out of food and you have to steal, you have to steal. It's the pandemic. No, can you? It's, it's the same thing. You can't do that. You can't change God's law. Now, if somebody steals because they're starving, and there's God may not bind them to the law. In, in certain cases, 
but I don't know, uh, pick any of the commandments. Uh, some of them uh, would, you'd never be excused from adultery and that sort of thing. But um, especially the Holy Mass, especially uh, the, the, the obligation to keep uh, Sunday holy. I, it, it's an amazing thing. But again, it has always been the case that if people cannot uh, attend Mass for reasons that they're sick or there's a, an accident or there's a special situation, uh, then then the obligation has not bound them uh, because of that special situation. But to lift it um, no one can lift it. So we cannot be dispensed from the law. I'm going to continue now uh, with Cardinal Burke's talk. He says, in this regard, I have been concerned about the response of some to the long-term impossibility of access to the sacraments who have said that it was actually good to be without the sacraments in order to concentrate on the more fundamental relationship with God. Some have expressed a preference for watching the televised Holy Mass in the comfort of their homes. But the Holy Mass is not some human representation. It is Christ himself who descends to the altars of our churches and chapels to make sacramentally present the saving fruit of his passion, death, resurrection, and ascension. What on earth could be preferable to the presence of Christ in our midst in the sacramental action. Some pastors have even rebuked the faithful who pleaded for the sacraments, accusing them of wanting in selfishness to risk serious harm to the health of others. Beloved, I've heard from people that have said just that. Um, No one denies the need to take necessary sanitary precautions, but the desire of the sacraments, especially of penance, And the Holy Eucharist is at the heart of our faith. Our relationship with God requires that we leave the confinement of our homes and what we may imagine to be a perfectly protected environment in order that he, God, through his only begotten Son, can speak to our hearts and nourish them with divine grace. In this regard, even as it is perfectly normal that individuals leave the confinement of their homes to purchase, for instance, food and medicine, it is even more perfectly normal that persons of faith leave the confinement of their homes to pray and to receive the sacraments. Here it must be noted that our Lord has entrusted the sacred realities of his presence with us to the care of our pastors. It is they who have received the grace to safeguard those realities and to provide access to them for the faithful. Their knowledge and experience must always be conformed to the truths of the faith handed down to us through the unbroken line of apostolic tradition. In a time of health crisis, public health experts may make recommendations about how best to protect the health of those who have access to churches and chapels, but it is the bishops and priests who must implement such recommendations in a manner that respects the divine reality of the faith itself and of the sacraments. For instance, to suggest that a priest distribute Holy Communion while wearing a mask and plastic gloves and sanitize his hands at various times after he has consecrated the sacred host may, from a medical perspective, be the most sanitary practice, but it does not respect the truth that it is Christ, who is Christ who is giving himself to us in the sacred host. At the same time, the prohibition of receiving the sacred host on the tongue and the mandate to receive Holy Communion in the hand, while it may be more sanitary, although that's debated, could only be justified by a grave reason. And beloved, there's no grave reason here. And I'm I'm interjecting to say there is no grave reason here. Um, The science, scientists, doctors have told us that receiving in in the hand is more dangerous. 
will give more occasion for the spread of the virus than receiving on the tongue, in addition to desecrating our Lord. Cardinal Burke continues, It is true that historically the Church has used different sacred instruments to give Holy Communion to someone who was highly contagious. But these methods of reception of Holy Communion were not used for the Holy Communion of the faithful in general. It was not assumed that the priest and the faithful in general were all infected. It seems to be the assumption today, and therefore could not receive Holy Communion in the most devout manner possible. Medical experts and public health officials can make recommendations. Excuse me, dear ones. Medical experts and public health officials can make recommendations to the church, but it is the church herself who must decide regarding practices touching upon the most sacred realities of our faith. The coronavirus COVID-19 epidemic has also raised a most serious question for us as citizens of a nation. The role of the People's Republic of China in the whole international health crisis raises many serious questions. Oh, I, I won't, don't want to keep reading this while the music is playing, beloved. There's the music for our first break, and we will be back after the break, and we will take your calls and texts and emails after the second break today, beloved. Excuse my, my yawns. Um... And our toll-free number is 1-877-511-5483 or email. Plenty of room for emails and lots of open lines. So email at mother at thestationofthecross.com. Um, and we'll be right back, dear ones. This is Jim Roy, president of the Station of the Cross. In John chapter 14, verse 15, Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Our 2020 Fall Appeal is dedicated to helping people know and understand our Lord's commandments. We hope you can help us today. You may soon receive a mailing that will tell you more about the appeal and the great gifts that you can receive. Please help us get off to a fantastic start by returning the envelope from one of our mailings. Or if possible, help us right now by calling 1-877-711-8500 or go to thestationofthecross.com or by using the donation page from your iCatholic Radio mobile app. Our website and app can also be a great way to view our Fall Appeal gifts. Your generosity will help countless people know and follow God's commandments. Thank you and God bless you and your families. LifeSite News is an international news agency devoted to defending life and family and restoring Christian culture. We aim to educate and activate our readers with the information they need to fight the most crucial battles of our day in their churches, workplaces, and families. Our motto is Caritas in Veritate, love in truth. We firmly believe that promoting the truth is an act of love, however hard it is to hear. Over the last 20 years, we have built a reputation for uncompromising reporting, no matter the cost. LifeSite News is by far the most popular pro-life website on the Internet, with over 40 million unique users every year and growing. Check us out at LifeSiteNews.com. Welcome to Mother Miriam Live on the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network with live video streaming brought to you by LifeSite News and the Station of the Cross. Call Mother with your questions at 1-877-511-5483 or email her at mother at thestationofthecross.com. 
Welcome back, beloved, to Mother Miriam Live. We're right in the middle of Cardinal Raymond Burke's um, uh, printed out this talk from the uh, Voice of the Family Rome Live Forum, Live Site News Forum, live streamed uh, this past May. And um, the theme is the coronavirus and Our Lady of Fatima. And um, I'm going to um, continue now. Um, let me see uh, with where we left off. I'll back off, uh, back up one sentence. The coronavirus COVID-19 epidemic has also raised a most serious question for us as citizens of a nation. The role of the People's Republic of China in the whole international health crisis raises many serious questions. While we as Christians love the Chinese people and want for them what is for their good, we cannot fail to recognize that their government is the embodiment of atheistic materialism or communism. In other words, it is a government which has no respect for God and for his law. The president of China um, has made it abundantly clear that the only acceptable religion in China is China. His government is based on the idolatry of the nation and a number of its laws and practices are in open violation of the most fundamental precepts of the divine law written upon the heart of every man and woman and articulated in the Decalogue. It is an evil form of government which, for instance, practices forced abortions and openly violates the religious freedom of the people. It is only right to ask what ethical principles have governed the involvement of the Chinese government in the coronavirus COVID-19 international health crisis. At the same time, it is only right to ask what has been and what is the involvement of national and international public health organizations with the Chinese government in the matter of the virus, which has threatened many lives and the very stability of sovereign nations. <clears throat> there is also the serious question of individuals with many billions of dollars at their disposal who regularly and powerfully sustain an anti-life and anti-family agenda and who are publicly involved in the crisis and exercise a heavy influence on public opinion regarding it. As citizens of a nation, it is our duty to ask those questions, these questions, and to pursue steadfastly honest answers to them. Cardinal Burke continues, When I was in elementary and secondary school, the study of what was called civics was taken with great seriousness. It was the study of how the government of one's nation works to protect the common good, including just relationships with other nations. The goal of the study was to make students, the future of the nation, responsible for the government of their nation. I am told that for a long time already, civics has not been taught in many schools. If such be the case, how will the students be equipped to be responsible citizens? And I, I think the answer is all over the news today. They're not equipped at all. Cardinal continues, the exercise of such responsibility is irreplaceable to a stable democratic government. It is also a part of the natural law, in specific the fourth commandment of the Decalogue, which teaches us respect for our parents and for those institutions which safeguard and promote family life ultimately for the nation. The present crisis should lead us to look again at education, a fundamental expression of our culture, and to provide what is lacking in the preparation of students to exercise the fundamental virtue of patriotism. I'm reading this. This is just a couple of months back, and it seems like Twilight Zone, Cardinal Burke. Um, my goodness, the schools are not going to teach this education through the schools is not going to provide what is lacking in the preparation of students to exercise the fundamental virtue of patriotism or any other virtue. Beloved, 
homeschooling is the only answer to, uh, it, with very few exceptional uh, good Catholic schools um, uh, and academies, very few exceptional ones, yes, but uh, not a single public school and um, not even most Catholic schools. It's, it's tragic to say that. I continue with Cardinal Burke's uh, talk. The present crisis has also made clear how dependent many nations are on the People's Republic of China, companies which for decades produce the necessary goods of a nation within the nation now produce those goods in China in the interest of economic gain. How many of the goods we use daily bear the label made in China? The present crisis must lead us to ask why in our nations we ourselves are not producing what is necessary for the healthy and strong life of the people of the nation. These are complex questions which are made all the more urgent by the fact that many nations are, in fact, dependent upon the People's Republic of China, a government which fully and radically espouses atheistic materialism. That's just the definition for communism. Cardinal Burke says, My somewhat long reflection should not lead to discouragement, but rather to the courageous pursuit of our Catholic identity in Christ, alive for us in his holy church, an identity which by its very definition is for the common good, the good of all peoples. Christ came to save the world, and he calls us to life in the Holy Spirit in order that we may be his co-workers in his redemptive mission, which continues until he returns at the end of time to establish new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. To inaugurate the wedding feast of the Lamb, his wedding feast, at which we are called to be participants through the grace of baptism and confirmation. Our Lord sent his virgin mother to Cova, De Ira near Fatima in Portugal, 1917, for the precise mission of calling us back to life in him, to a strong Catholic identity in the face of the rise and spread of atheistic materialism or communism. In speaking with you today, Cardinal Burke says, about the critical situation in which we find ourselves I could not give you better counsel than the Virgin Mother of God gave to us through the three shepherd children at Cova de Iria, Saints Francesco and Jacinta Marto and the servant of God, Sister Marie, Maria Lucia of Jesus and of the Immaculate Heart. The appearances of Our Lady of Fatima came at a time when the world was in a terrifying crisis a crisis which threatened its very future, a crisis which in many and frightening ways continues in our day to threaten the future of man and of the world. It is a crisis which has also infected the life of the church, not, of course, touching the objective reality of Christ's life in the church for our salvation, but rather obscuring and manipulating the church from within for purposes alien to her nature and thus poisonous for souls. The immediate manifestation of the crisis was the rise of atheistic materialism or communism in Russia and its spread throughout the world. Atheistic materialism or communism is evil at its root, for it is the abandonment of faith in God and in his plan for our eternal salvation, as he, from the creation, had written it into nature and, above all, has inscribed it upon the human heart. That's Romans chapter 1. It is the abandonment of the mystery of faith and indifference, disregard, or even hostility to the supreme reality of the redemptive incarnation of God the Son, by which he has won for man eternal salvation 
the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, of divine grace, so that man can live in communion with God in accordance, in accord with his plan, God's plan for his creation. Christ has won for man the gift of his own life, so that man may attain eternal life while preparing the world for its transformation in accord with God's plan for the inauguration of new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Christ is the eternal Lamb of God at whose wedding feast we are all called to have a place. God prepared, the Cardinal continues, God prepared the messengers of the Virgin of Fatima by three visions of the Angel of Portugal, which took place during the spring, summer, and autumn of 1916. During the first vision, while telling the shepherd children not to be afraid, pardon me, while telling the shepherd children not to be afraid and assuring them that he was the angel of peace, he taught them to pray three times with these words, My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you. I ask pardon of you for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love you. That would be repeated three times, beloved. God's messenger to the shepherd children was already indicating the way in which the mother of God would lead the world to deal with the grave crisis of atheistic materialism or communism in its inherent apostasy, the way of faith and prayer and of penance and reparation. Apostasy is not limited simply to the denial of the faith, but it involves every aspect of the faith. In the words of the um, uh, Dictionnaire de Theologie uh, Catholique, uh, the Dictionary of uh, Catholic Theology, apostasy is a sin against the faith, since it rejects revealed doctrine against religion, because it denies to God true worship against justice since it tramples underfoot the promises of the Christian. I'm going to read that again uh, with our break coming up. Uh, I'm going to read that again as soon as we come back from the break, beloved. I will take your calls and emails. If you're calling in, I will take a break and um, and uh, what do I want to say here? And, and take your call for sure. one 511 5483 But otherwise, I'm going to continue with this message from Cardinal Burke. And then we'll take more of your calls and emails as soon as we're through. We stand at a crossroads in history. We can stand up for life, family, and a Christian culture, or we can stand idly by while the fabric of society becomes fundamentally anti-life, anti-family, and anti-Christian, slowly leading to its own demise. LifeSite News is the leading defender of life, family, and Christian culture. Through our news reporting, we seek to educate readers with information and zeal. They need to fight the most crucial battles of our day. And we need your help to continue that mission. You can support LifeSite News by following our social media pages on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Another way to support LifeSite is to prayerfully consider becoming a Sustain Life monthly donor to help us continue to save lives in the culture. To donate, visit give.lifesitenews.com forward slash sustain life. Our staff of over 40 and millions of future generations Thank you for helping to save the culture. Hello, beloved. This is Mother Miriam, host of Mother Miriam Live, to let you know that there is a magnificent array of programs that originate from the Station of the Cross, such as Stand Out for Life with Jim Havens and Father Imbarato. 
They pray for and discuss the pro-life movement each Saturday morning live at 9 a.m. Eastern. You can also listen to Stand Out for Life anytime as a podcast on the iCatholic Radio mobile app. I turned from a recreational drug user to a drug addict. That took me to my knees. I lost a family, almost two families. I lost friends. Now that I'm back in the Catholic Church, I'm a new person. I love it. I love it. My heart's there. I took communion after 18 years, and I, the rest of the Mass I sat and cried. God restored my life. God restored my family. God restored my love. If you've been away from the Catholic Church for any reason, visit catholicscomehome.org today. Welcome to Mother Miriam Live on the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network with live video streaming brought to you by LifeSite News and the Station of the Cross. Call Mother with your questions at 1-877-511-5483 or email her at mother at thestationofthecross.com. Welcome back, dear family, to Mother Miriam Live. Um, this is um, our half-hour break, and we have a whole half-hour to ourselves. I'm not going to continue with Cardinal Burke's uh, article at the moment, um, rather than taking your calls and emails. And we'll, if we have time, I'll go back to it, and if not, we'll we'll finish it up tomorrow because there's still quite a bit to go. Um, so I'm going to take your calls and your texts and your emails. Um, and the toll-free number is one eight seven seven five one one five four eight three. Our lines are wide open. You're welcome to call in any time, dear ones. And the email is mother at the station of the cross dot com. Um, we have an email from Nancy. <clears throat> Who writes, Dear Mother Miriam, thank you so much for the work that you do to bring the faith to us on the Internet. Thank you, Nancy. I'm wondering what you might suggest for someone who suspects the cause of their depression and anxiety problems may be the result of being detached or not in communion with God. Oh, my goodness. That certainly uh, is a reason for depression, of course. She continues, I have been on disability for many years have recently found the the traditional Latin Mass, but it is hard to get to with my health, and I have begun working through the Baltimore Catechism, but feel very isolated. I have been in recovery programs where I found it very useful to go through the book with another with the same goal, and I'm wondering how I might find someone to go through the Baltimore Catechism with. I am afraid to offend my local f- priests, one of whom declared himself a modernist in my first confession with him. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's not the Latin priest. Um, so I am stumped on how to find someone either locally or even over Zoom to go through it with. I also um, also book recommendations would be helpful. My life just has no meaning. I am paralyzed with mortal fear each day because of financial insecurity and troublesome living arrangement and am afraid to leave my house. Any ideas and or prayers are welcome. May God bless you, bless and keep you for all you do, Mother Miriam, in Christ, Nancy. Oh, my dear. Um, Nancy, dear one, I would suggest that you call the priest of that Latin church Tell him everything you just wrote to me and um, ask him if there are not people, uh, parishioners in the church that could come and visit you and assist you in this so you're not alone. Um, You shouldn't be alone. You shouldn't be living in this kind of fear. It's, It's just awful. It's not needed, and you should not be isolated. So I'm not quite sure... Dear one, of the reason for your isolation, um, it would be good for uh, someone to go through the Baltimore Catechism with you, and I would suggest you ask the priest for someone to do that with you. Um, uh, they they should respond happily f- to that to have somebody come and and uh, go through that Baltimore catechism with you that would should be a wonderful thing to do um, so I would call the Latin parish tell them your situation dear one 
and say that you can't handle being alone, you live in fear, you, you don't know how to go through the Baltimore Catechism by yourself, and it's very difficult for you to get to them. And could he visit, pay a visit to you or send over a good, responsible, mature woman, not a man, a woman, to, um, uh, or a couple, husband and wife or a woman, to come and assist you? Uh, truly, he should do that. Uh, they should do that. And if not, uh, you might call not the parish where the priest told you he was a modernist, but uh, other good Novus Ordo parishes and see if somebody can come over and help. We are there to help one another. Nobody should be frightened and and destitute and isolated and living in their home by themselves. No one should be that, should do that. There might be an order of uh, religious sisters um, that can reach out to you as well. Um, you might, uh, Nancy, dearest, give the diocese a call and tell them your situation and say, is there an order of religious sisters uh, or a retired priests or somebody who could come and, um, and, and assist you? That would be, that would be good. Um, okay. Um, don't give up, Nancy. Uh, you, your situation is very understandable. And uh, you have a Christian community that should help you. So call the diocese, call the Latin parish, um, and then even call local parishes. But um, if a priest tells you he's a modernist, whatever that means, uh, just find another priest. Uh, We have a text from Jim um, from Pennsylvania who says, can you please cite the authority or scientific research where it states that it is safer to receive on the tongue versus the hand? Well, uh, if I can look it up, um, if I can look it up during the break, Jim, I will do that. But I can refer you uh, to one site, go to LifeSite News, Go to the John Henry Weston, W-E-S-T-E-N, show, and five reasons, it's titled, uh, not to receive communion on the hand. Five reasons why we should not receive communion on the hand. Um, That should be the only reference you know uh, that you need. And if you need others, just... um, just, uh, do an internet search on why communion um, in the hand uh, is um, uh, how do you, I don't know how you, you'd be more susceptible to uh, receiving the virus than when probably distributed on the tongue. So um, I hope that helps you, Jim. Uh, let's see. Now we have Loretta. Um, Loretta says, I'm glad to hear that you're getting over your cold. Yes, I am. And you can still hear that I've got a bit of it left. And I think that's what all the yawns are about. I've got to take in more oxygen. I have a problem, she writes, that I've been dealing with for some time now pertaining to Holy Communion. I was married in the church for 49 years, uh, in the church 49 years ago and divorced several years later. I am currently unmarried. I know that I have broken my vows to God. I was young and naive and did not think about the consequences of not being able to receive the Holy Eucharist. I am wondering what I must do in order to receive Holy Communion once I return to a traditional Latin Mass. I would very much love to return to church and participate fully in the Mass. Any guidance you can offer me would be so very much appreciated. Um, God bless you, Mother, and she signs it lonesome for my Lord, Loretta. Loretta, if you're going to go to a traditional Latin Mass, make an appointment with that priest, go to confession, tell him your situation. I'm guessing your marriage was not annulled. Um, uh, I think you would have included that information. But just say to the priest that you uh, were divorced, a few years after your marriage, and um, uh, and if you have been intimate with any man since, if you have dated since then, you must confess that also, and let him absolve you from your sin, 
and then just strictly live a celibate life, completely celibate, and you'll be able to receive the Holy Eucharist. All right, so run to that priest. Don't waste any time. Run to that priest. Confess your sins. Live a completely celibate life, and you will be able to return to the sacraments. Um, We have an email from someone who writes in anonymously and says, can you explain whether Catholics worship Mary and why they pray to saints? In a in 1 Timothy, it says that Jesus is our sole mediator. Isn't praying to the saints going against the Bible? No, and I want to look that up. I think it's 1 Timothy uh, ch- uh, chapter 2. I'm, I have to look that up. Hold on a minute. Um, I will. But um, no, Catholics do not worship Mary. Um, in a sense, if you read old books... Um, from the last century or so, they're going to use that language that uh, we worship Mary. Worship does not mean adoration. We use it today to mean adoration, but through the centuries, uh, through the years, the meanings and the usage of words change. Um, We do not um, uh, worship Mary. Um, uh, the word worship was initially two words with worth ship and it means giving an individual the honor they are due the worth they are due just as timothy writes that we have to give excuse me priests and pastors double honor because of what they do and so um um let me see now um I just want to make sure we have time before the second break here. Um, okay, so the the word worship is an old word, and um, it, it simply means that we give Mary the honor that she's due, and as the mother of God, we indeed do that. Um, we don't worship the saints. We pray to the saints because the Word of God tells us to pray um, to all men everywhere. That's the same passage that tells us that Christ is the one mediator, uh, is the passage that tells us to pray for kings and all men everywhere. Let me just say, I'm trying to look this up while I'm, uh, to give you the exact words. Um, Hang on a second now. Um... If I, I can look up the Timothy scripture here. Um, okay. Uh, I'm sorry for delaying you so much, but um, um, uh, it's Timothy 2 5. That's what I thought. Um, uh, there's one God, there's one mediator between God and men, the man, Jesus Christ. It's because there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus, Christ Jesus, that we can pray for one another because he, we pray through Christ. He is our mediator. So if you asked me to pray for you, you're going to have surgery or you're sick or whatever it is, that you're out of work, of course I'll pray for you. I'm not going to say to you, why don't you go to Jesus? Of course you can go to Jesus. But he's given all of us to pray for one another And and you say, but there's one man uh, between, there's one meteor between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. Of course, that's why Apostle Paul says, pray for all men everywhere. Pray without ceasing. Pray always for me. Because there is one um, um, mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. So we are little mediators in him. He is the intercessor. We are small m intercessors. He is the reconciler, and yet Apostle Paul calls us to be reconcilers. Everything in Christ, everything in Christ. Um, he, uh, he is the high priest. We are the common priesthood. It's all because of Christ. And so we pray for everyone any, everywhere. The, the difference is that on earth, we can only... Uh, If you need to ask me to pray for you, you need to send me a message, a text, a phone call, a letter, uh, something, so I know you need prayer. But 
when we die, we're outside of time and space, and there is absolute communication between heaven and earth. Absolute communication between heaven and earth. Um, And so, yes, the saints in heaven can hear us, and they answer us the same way we are answered on earth, through Christ. There's the music for our break, beloved. We'll be right back after the break. Call in with anything on your heart, toll free. Um, and it's one 511 5483 or email at mother at the station of the cross.com. We'll be right back. This is Jim Roy, president of the Station of the Cross. In John chapter 14, verse 15, Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Our 2020 Fall Appeal is dedicated to helping people know and understand our Lord's commandments. We hope you can help us today. You may soon receive a mailing that will tell you more about the appeal and the great gifts that you can receive. Please help us get off to a fantastic start by returning the envelope from one of our mailings. Or if possible, help us right now by calling 1-877-711-8500 or go to thestationofthecross.com or by using the donation page from your iCatholic Radio mobile app. Our website and app can also be a great way to view our Fall Appeal gifts. Your generosity will help countless people know and follow God's commandments. Thank you and God bless you and your families. The future of the family is grim. As Our Lady of Fatima said, the final battle will be for the family. It truly seems as though we're in the heat of this final battle and we need your help. Our mission at LifeSite News is to educate and activate readers with the information they need to defend life and the family and restore Christian culture. We are currently the most popular pro-life website on the internet with over 40 million unique users every year. And we've been experiencing an even bigger reach than ever this year. But we need your help to reach more of the 7.7 billion people on earth if we are to truly succeed in changing the culture. Please consider donating to help our mission of promoting the culture of life and fearless defenders of the faith like Mother Miriam. Visit give.lifesite.news.com to give today. Thank you for your support. Welcome to Mother Miriam Live on the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network with live video streaming brought to you by LifeSite News and the Station of the Cross. Call Mother with your questions at 1-877-511-5483 or email her at mother at the station of the cross.com. <coughs> Welcome back, beloved. Sorry. Um, to uh, Mother Miriam Live. Let me just say um, a word about that last email, and I I know, dearest Christian, you're on the line. Hang on just one moment, if you could. Um, I I really didn't do a good job giving the answer to that. Catholics do not worship Mary. We do not worship saints. We do not worship plaster or clay or porcelain or stone. No. But we, we pray to those people that they represent. And a saint... Um, we're all saints, by the way. Um, uh, we're all separated. We're all uh, separated from the world to God, which is what a saint is. But those saints that are in heaven are outside of time and space, and we are in Christ, and they are more in Christ than we are. And James says, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. They have now, they are outside of the presence and power of sin. They have the mind of God more than any of us. And yes, if we pray to them, just as God wants us to pray uh, for one another, uh, when we pray to them, it, it, simply we're asking them for prayer the same way if I ask you for prayer. To pray to them is simply to ask them to pray for us. And they can do that from a much better position than anyone can on earth outside of time and space. God has made that possible. The church is the church militant on earth, the church suffering in purgatory, the church triumphant in heaven, and the saints long to pray for us that we would 
uh, come into uh, heaven with them and rejoice with them for all eternity. And so Jesus remains our sole mediator as God between man and God, which is why that in Christ we are little mediators in him and can fulfill Paul's instructions to pray for one another. All right, Kristen, dear one, hi. Hi. You know, Mother, anyone who's trained, doctors, nurses, can confirm this. To work with uh, anyone or anywhere there is contagious disease, the universal precautions state very clearly no hand to face to mouth to nose contact which means that yeah. certainly communion in the hand is the most um dangerous unhygienic form of contact wow. in God fact people yeah. would people need to take off the masks because the masks are filling with moisture and they yeah. are putting people at risk for Legionnaire's disease now, which is getting confused with COVID. Yeah. And Legionnaire's disease is an infection. The other thing is if they really want to prevent uh, spread or contagion, they should be wearing cotton gloves or some kind of glove, um, cotton because it's breathable, and it has tr been traditionally through the centuries a protectant. Again, it keeps you from touching your face, nose, mouth. Mm -hmm. Very good. Kristen, you're terrific. God bless you. I, are you still there? Somehow not. Okay. I'm here. I'm oh, here. Good. Okay, good. Well, you're wonderful as always. Thank you so much, Kristen. Um, you're welcome. And, and um, we'll speak to you again soon. You always come to the rescue. God bless you, dear one. Um, we also have an article here um, from uh, Bishop Athanasius Snyder, and it's, uh, it is um, what I'm looking at is a website from Catholic, uh, California Catholic Daily. Communion on the tongue is more hygienic, says, say, priests and bishop. Um, and Bishop Athanasius Snyder says, nobody can force a Catholic to receive on the hand. So now, um, you know, Kristen would agree if she was still on the line, nobody can force anybody to do anything, and yet uh, they do or they just simply refuse communion to you. So uh, read that. Communion on the tongue is more hygienic, say, priests and bishop. It's the California Catholic Daily, um, and it's um, cal-catholic.com. Uh, just look that up with communion on the tongue, and that, that will help. Um, well, I, I, hope, I hope all this... Uh, I hope somehow priests or bishops, if they're not listening, that you will all go to your priests and bishops and print these things out for them. Print out the articles of Cardinal Burke, Bishop Athanasius Snyder, uh, others, uh, the medical industry, to show that it's more dangerous to receive communion on the hand than on the tongue. A, a, a bishop, uh, or priest rather, who knows how to properly distribute communion on the tongue, never touches the person, never touches the tongue. He does not need to wear gloves. In fact, he should not. It disrespects our Lord. Um, okay, uh, Jean. Hi, Jean from Massachusetts on the Hi. line. Hi. Hi, dear. Hi, Mother. How, how, how are you? I'm doing great. Better every day. Thank Good. you. Yeah. It just it, it has become a very very deep concern for me um, because I I firmly believe when we when we receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ we should be on our knees and we I was should. wondering what your thoughts what and what are your thoughts of bringing back the altar rail a hundred percent three hundred five a thousand percent they should oh, never wow. have taken them out they should never have That's taken right. them out and some right. very 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 slowly some churches are putting back yep. communion rails, some, Novus Ordo. But oh. the solution is just go to a Catholic, uh, a Latin parish, because you yes. won't find a Latin parish without a communion rail. So, um, um, unless... I'm, gl I'm glad to hear you. I'm glad, yeah. to, I'm glad to hear you say that, because it has been so troubling, uh, just to, just knowing that we don't, most, most churches don't have that as an option, and that is so important. You so know, thank you for your, it, your it's response. True. And I tell you what, um, uh, when I go to Mass, the sisters with me kneel. There's no communion rail. Yes. If we don't go to the Latin yeah. Mass, uh, she'll kneel yeah. uh, on the floor. 
and it's a gorgeous sight. Uh, and so do others. Yeah, okay. I have bad knees and I can't kneel. So I, I am. So I do a ninety uh, degree profound bow if I'm at a Novus Auto Church, which sometimes we have to do because of the timing of the mass. But um, I am determined to get into a good exercise program and renew my knees so I could be on the floor if there's no rail. Yeah. Uh, we absolutely yeah. should have the communion rail, Jean. Absolutely. God yeah. bless you, dear one. Go ahead. Bless you. Thank you so much for your answer. God bless you. You too, sweetheart. Oh, dear priests, dear bishops, um, if you only knew the aching heart of sheep, if you only knew how much we need you, we need you to love God. We need you to love the church. We need you to let the sheep go on their knees and receive on their tongues and revere our Lord. Um, there's no, it's just a a desecration in the hand. There are those, you know, priests have cursed some of us out uh, for wanting to receive on the tongue, and they have no idea how the hearts of some of their parishioners absolutely break because they cannot imagine receiving our Lord in their hand, and they walk away because they can't, it's too painful for them. I wish the priests loved our Lord that much and understood the heart of their sheep that much. Be true shepherds, dear, dear bishops. Be true shepherds. We beg you not to take a power on yourself that you don't have. No one has a right. No one has a right to dispense anyone from Mass, and no one has a right to refuse communion on the tongue. I'm not saying this. I'm re- only repeating what Bishop Athanasius Snyder, Cardinal Seurat, head of the prefect of uh, the Congregation of Divine Worship and the Sacraments have said, no one has a right to refuse communion on the tongue. So uh, it's, it's a very, very grievous situation. And those shepherds that will not serve communion on the tongue I, uh, I don't know what kind of shepherds you are, but you are you are hurting your sheep. You're not helping them, and you're not following God or His church. God bless you, beloved, and we'll speak with you tomorrow. Many reasons to visit the Station of the Cross online, learn about our programming, listen live through our web stream, and so much more. Visit thestationofthecross.com. That's thestationofthecross.com.